What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. It's been a while since we did a podcast. First, let me set this up for you. We are here in the Draymond Green Strength and Conditioning Facility or Center at Michigan State University. I have the honor and pleasure. Well, before we get into that, uh, as you can see, last night was the Hall of Fame. and I looked like I just rolled out of bed. I did. Um, so my ankles are ashy. My hands are ashy. But I have the honor and pleasure of having today my big brother, the original gangster who started all of this Michigan State stuff. I know, you know, sometimes we, we can lose sight of the ones that really did it and set it up. And, you know, we talking about going back to 96, you know, and I think, you know, today you see Michigan State and it's like, man, it's, you know, it's, it's Michigan State. Like, it's one of them programs, and it is. But long before it was ever one of them programs, we had a guy come from Flint, Michigan, and it was cool to go to the other school then. But when you are cut the way this guy is cut, the 14th pick, in the NBA draft, 2000 national champion. I'm honored to welcome my big brother, Mateen Cleese, to the Draymond Green <laughs> Show. Uh, What's happening? Baby, yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. So, I mean, let's get right into it. Um, at the time that you came to Michigan State, Michigan State wasn't the place to be. And we know everybody was going to the other school. What, what was it that brought you here? to say, no, nah, I'm going to go do this, as opposed to just jumping on board. It's right after the five, five. It's, and yeah, you say, no, nah, I'm going to go do this. What what was it that brought you here? First of all, like, um, and not trying to be arrogant, but I believed in me. You know what I mean? I wasn't a cat to go just jump on somebody else's team or ride somebody else's coattail. I believed in me, first of all. And, you know, the way Coach Izzo recruited me, man, he, and he inspired me so much because a lot of the other coaches was kind of like, used car salesman, man. They were just selling you whatever you wanted to hear. But he was so real. I mean, he recruit, He was at everything. You know, he was at my football games, basketball games, workouts, everything. He was there every day and telling me, you know, we're going to win a national championship. And I believed him, you know, and a lot of people thought I was crazy to come to Michigan State because it was like, honestly, who you going to pass the ball to? You know, Michigan did have a lot of great players or whatever it was, but I believed in me, man, and I, and I didn't want the easy route. You know, why not go to Michigan State and do something special? You know, you can you can ride somebody else's coattail and, or just fit in. Nah, no, I mean, I believed in me so much. I say, hell, why not go to Michigan State and, and, and do something great? You know what I mean? So I, I, I believed in me. I bet on myself. And, and, you know, coming here, what was that What was that journey like? Because it, it, it wasn't all peaches <laughs> from the beginning. Nah. You know, I think people see the end, and it's like, oh, man. Them guys were that. You know, you see 99 Final Four, you see 2000 National Championship, and you get it twisted. But what was it like in the beginning coming to to really light that torch? It was different, man. Um, and a lot of people don't know, too, I broke my back right before I got here. So before I got, when I got to Michigan State, I was never the athlete I was. But when I got on campus, one thing I wanted to change was the mentality. And it was something simple as like an open gym. Like, to me, if you take a score, there's a winner and there's a loser. You know what I mean? And that, that got to mean something, just the open gym game. And I started saying, well, we're going to keep track of wins and losses because everybody, some cats would come in here just to get a sweat, you know, get up and down. I said, nah, they taking score. That means somebody got to lose, all right? So I don't want to be on that end. So what we're going to do is start keeping track of the wins and losses. And what that did, start getting pride. That brought pride to winning an open gym game with nobody here, no, no sports writers, no crowd. We brought pride in just that. I wanted to brag that night that I won more games than you, okay? So that mentality started to really get the thing going. You know what I mean? So that's what it was. I, my first job was to change the mentality of people that was okay with losing. I wasn't okay with that, you know? And it was two people that wasn't okay with losing. That was me and Coach Izzo. He was wired the same way. So it was easy. We, we was like tip for tat. We had each other's back. But we was the only two at that point. That was wired that way. But like I said, it was, it was, it was changing the mindset. And then at that point, you know, the open gym and making that important, winning. All right. Then the next thing was scheduling. You know, coach, line them up. Let's go play all them dudes they saying good. All these programs that they saying the top. Let's go play them. 
Line them up. So, it, so it's your fault we end up with these fucked up ass <laughs> schedules every year. I had a little bit of something to do with that. <laughs> it's, it's your fault. Hey, but Coach, that one thing he, that's my man, because one thing he did say, he said, hey, hey, you better get them, you better, I ain't going to say the words he said, but you better get them in the gym. Okay, you want to play these guys? Well, you better get them in the gym so we'll be ready. I said, line them up. We'll be ready. So that was the mindset. We ain't back. We ain't ducking from nobody. We, we want the smoke. Absolutely. Yes, sir. You come here and, you know, Mo P was already here. Mm -hmm. Mo P, it's a year older than you. But no no disrespect to Mo P. That's, that's one of my big bros, too. Mm -hmm. But the gravity that you pulled when you decided to come here, then you get Charlie. And then it's this whole Flintstone thing. You got a Tone Smith here. Robert in football. Then it's this whole Flintstone thing. Was that, did, is that what you saw this becoming? Like, yo, I want to make this like a Flint thing. I want to make this our school. Because for me, growing up and watching y'all, Michigan State was just all about the Flintstones. It, it, and then every, then Jay Rich came here from Saginaw. My baby. But Michigan State was, it was, it was almost like it was Flint schools. Was that your vision or, or did it just kind of roll out that way? Yeah, it, it kind of just rolled out that way. And I, you know, I'm Flintstone to the core. I ain't ducking that. But I was all about the team. You know, people made a big, a big deal. The national media made a big deal because that is something unique. You got four cats from one city, that small city, that come to a major university and make the noise we were making. That was kind of cool. But, man, we were all about the team. And I made sure they knew that. I, 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 I would say it all the time. Hey, we ain't just, this is a team, all right? But I will pull them to the side every now and then and say, hey, baby, you know, everybody from the, from the crib watching these games, so we got to represent. But I made sure the whole team knew, man, this is a team thing, man. You know what I mean? Like, we don't get it done without nobody. Everybody play a role. I'm talking about from the managers to, to, to the walk-ons to whoever – Everybody play a piece in this. So that was kind of cool, you know what I mean? Being from one city, you know, and them was my boys. We grew up playing together and stuff. But, man, that, that kind of just wrote, it kind of just happened, to be honest, because, you know, I'm all about everybody. It was all about the team here at Michigan State. I think a lot of people don't know. Um, coming out of high school, you were one of the top point guards in the country. It's great. But what most people don't know is you were also one of the top quarterbacks in the country. And I think. Coming up at that time and, and, and seeing, like, what Charlie War has just did at Florida State, like, I'm sure, how how much of a decision was it for you to choose? Like, yo, I'm, not only I'm going to go to Michigan State, but I'm going to choose basketball over football because that's a totally different thing. Or you could have went to a school and said, hey, I'm going to play basketball and football. But how much – did that decision weigh on you or was that just an easy, like, no, nah, I'm going basketball and that's just that? Nah, man, I thought about that. Um, the car accident kind of had me gravitate a little more to basketball when I broke my back. But, man, I, I was seriously thinking about playing football. And like you talk, you mentioned Charlie Ward, I kind of smiled because that was my guy. I, I admired him so much and looked up to him. I actually reached out to him on uh, Instagram the other day and just said, what's up? You know, hey, man, Absolutely. love you. Respect. Because I, I, he was a point guard. He was a quarterback. So I was seriously considering going to Florida State because um, I had just watched him. Um, but um, Coach Izzo, man, he, he made it hard. You know, it was, I couldn't tell him no. Um, but even when I got here, I didn't rule football out. And that's one thing I love about Coach Izzo. We, me and him were sitting and talking to Nick Saban. We together. You know, I never ruled it out. I was like, actually, if I didn't have the, the – Great year I had my sophomore year. I was probably going to play football that next year. But Big Ten player of the year. We went to the Sweet 16, won the Big Ten. Um, first team All-American that year with Vince Carter, and it, which was a hell of a class. So that kind of just was, it just happened. But I hadn't ruled football out probably until I had that, that good sophomore season. Really? Yeah, I, used, I would go to Nick Saban. We talked all the time. I was going to play football if I didn't have a good year. Is probably would have loved you more. You know he more of a football <laughs> fan than basketball anyway. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, uh, <clears throat> when, when you come through Michigan State, uh, one of the things that I've always appreciated about is, is like, there's errors. And, you know, I'm coming through Michigan State, all we hear about is the Mo Cleese era, you know. And then for me, the Travis Walden era. And then, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a little tiny error than Denzel Valentine. <laughs> but 
What I want you to talk to me more about is Coach Izzo. Just the the guy that he is. Like I said in my speech last night, like I'm a ride for you forever. And I, you know, I I get a crack out of talking to dudes in the locker room, like, yo, your coach really don't bang with you like that. Like you, you go around the NBA and, and like you talk to guys. It's baffling to me when I hear guys talk about their coach. Like I don't understand that. That don't register with me that you don't like your college coach or that you can't you can't just pick up the phone and call your coach and, and he gonna answer. Or I'm fucked up and he hop on a flight and land at 11 p.m. and leave at 6 a.m. just to see me. Like <clears throat> it don't register with me when I hear guys talk about that. I saw it with you, and I'm like, wow, I want that. But just talk to me more about the guy, not the coach. Everybody know the coach. Everybody know the Hall of Famer, but I just want to hear about the guy. Man, <clears throat> and it's, it's funny, man. I, and I am getting emotional when you talk about him because man, that dude right there, like that part, throw the coaching out the window. Like, we know all that. Good coach. Great coach. It's that, man. Like, the talks that you have and that, that when you go in his office, he ain't the coach no more, man. He just like, like damn it, like a father. And talk to you. He had a way with you, man. And he would, he, he, man, he, 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 he got the best out of me like none other. And when I first got up here, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't, man. I I was I ain't know why. Why he was always on me, man. Like if you passed the ball to somebody, they didn't make a shot. It was my fault. I ain't understand that. And he would he brought something out of me that I didn't even know was in it. I was a leader, and I was, but he he took it to a whole another level. But it's them talks, man. When he just put his arm around you and talk to you and tell you how much he love you and care about you, he don't even bring up basketball sometimes. And that's what. That's why I'm so glad I came to Michigan State. That part, man. He 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 would put his arm around me, man, and hug me and tell me how much he loved me and cared about me, man. And that's why I would run through a brick wall for him. I know he had my back, and I had his. And and for me, and just like my parents, my mother and father, I was raised by great parents, so I was used to that. And he just, when I came here, he gave me that same feel from when I left the crib. But it's it's that part, you know what I mean? That 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 part when he talked to you, man. And I never wanted to let him down. When he said we gonna win a national championship here, I was gonna do everything in my my power to win a national championship here. It was two people that believed that, two people, man, me and him. And every time I came on the court, I gave everything I had because I didn't want to let him down, man. And it's that's what's make him special. I know you love him the way I love him. But that that dude is something special, man. And and it, it pisses me off. And I'm gonna address this real quick. When people say shit like, um, you know, can he relate to the players now? And is he game passing him by? Hell, man, are you crazy? Are you crazy? The people that come here that really wanna be great, we love him. Shit. Cause he gonna get the best out of you. He gonna push you to a whole nother level. I wanna be, he used to tell me, I hell, I want you to be better than what, what you want yourself to be. And that, that, that used to drive me so much, man. So if you want to be great, this is a hell of a place to come. Yeah, he going to hold you accountable. But you know he care about you. You know he got your back. So hold me accountable. I'm, I'm with it. But I'm glad you asked me that, man, because that dude right there is special. The hell with the coach and that. He's special, man. He did something <laughs> for me. Man, i never forget it, man. I'm a, he made me a hell of a person, man. Him and my mother and father had great parents, but that him right there, he made me a hell of a person. Be able to overcome the challenges you go through in life, that feeling sorry for yourself, he ain't with that. That ain't happening. <laughs> you have a bad guy, so what? Let we on to the next one. So it's it was that, man, that I, I it's prices. I can never ever repay him for some of the things he did for me. You know what I mean? That's why I want to re repay it and give it back to everybody else. No doubt. I think um, <clears throat> for me, I always tell people like, and, and it's, it's exactly what you just said, is I never understood the yelling 
early. <laughs> <laughs> like, the fucking <laughs> meetings till three o'clock in the morning. Like, <laughs> but then, once you go through it, and you, then you don't have that anymore. Right. It's like, then you want it back. You know <laughs> right, what I'm saying? Like, right. You want the three o'clock, the 3 a.m. meeting back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you get out in the world and you realize, motherfuckers don't care about you like that. Man. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. <clears throat> it took me a while to understand when he's, you, you, you're, you're fucking fat ass, get in some shape. <laughs> like, and it, it, it took me a while to realize, like, yo, all the yelling, all the screaming, the fussing, pissed off. This dude, this dude is chasing success for me harder than I'm chasing success. Right. And it got to a point for me where I'm like, as you just said, I can't let him down. Right. Like, yeah, I want to make it to the NBA. Like, absolutely. But I can't let him down. Right. Because he's chasing this for me harder than I'm chasing this for me. And so then what does it do? It raises your level or you fold. Right. Right. It raises your level or you fold. And I've seen so many people fold to it. When I was here, before I got here, after I left, I've seen so many people fold to it. And it'll piss me off if somebody, when, when people would say, is so holding somebody back? Duh. Or he ain't letting such and such do this. He won't let that guy dribble. And I tell him, he won't let him dribble because he fucking dribbled off his foot when he dribbled. <laughs> like, I ain't, right. I ain't really seen him tell somebody who can dribble not to dribble. Right. But I have seen him tell someone who can't fucking dribble not to dribble. 100%. You should go run this wing. You should catch and shoot. Right. By the way, if you just go do that, you can actually get to the NBA. But once you start dribbling and dribbling off your fucking foot out of bounds, you can't get to the NBA. Yes, yeah, sir. And, 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 and so it was, that was one of the things, and still to this day, that would bother me because it's like, oh, man, he put you in this box. Man. He put you in the box you belong in. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> because for me, there wasn't no four men dribbling the ball up the floor. No. But I showed him I can dribble the ball up the floor. And what did he do? He encouraged it. Right. Hey, you get the ball, go. Keep the ball low. Keep it out in front. That's how you make the plays. You can see the next play if you're here. But if you got the ball back here and now you're trying to make a play, you can't make a play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so to to hear people say stuff like that, it will bother me. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, Can I chime in on that? Speak, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you no, off, little bro. Ahead. But you're right. Like, that part. Like, nah, you shit, you can't dribble. Can't dribble. <laughs> so you're not going to dribble here. You know what I mean? You're not a shooter. Go get a rebound. Absolutely. That's what great coaches do. I remember, man, we was playing the game on national TV, man. He took me out the game. That's my man. I love him to death, man. i never forget that. He took me out the game, set me next to him. He said, I took you out because you looking bad on national TV. <laughs> I ain't even I, I'm doing you a favor because you looking terrible on national TV. Get your shit together, man. Now go back in. Mm -hmm. That stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, like that stuff. Like, he said, I'm taking you out. I'm doing you a favor because you looking terrible. I said, <laughs> I was mad and I started laughing. You know what I'm saying? Then he's like, now go back in. Like when they had a hell of a game. But it's little stuff like that, man. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you damn right. Like, and that, yeah, I'm with you on that, man. I'm going to ride for him. Shit, all day. <laughs> You've gone through some shit in your life. Yeah. Um, off the court, after, after, after college basketball, after NBA basketball. And I think when I take a step back and when I look at it, there's two guys who I have the utmost respect for that roll with you through your shit no matter what. And that's Iz and Matt Ishbia. And I think the loyalty that you've shown to those guys, it, it's, I think it's right that they showed that loyalty back. But the reality is, is most people never show that loyalty back. And, and it's not that they owed it back. Because the loyalty that you show, you show because you loyal. That don't necessarily make the next guy, it, it don't make them have to be that way. It don't say, oh, now they owe you, you that. But the way those two guys has, has rolled for you, 
it's actually a microcosm of the program that you and is built. And to have people like that in, in, in your darkest times, what did that do for you going through the shit that you had to go through? <laughs> Bro, man, you better get me cry out here. <laughs> it's crazy, but Matt, another real one. Like, <clears throat> man, I'm talking about came, came to get me. I was at my lowest point ever, man. I got low as you can get before you break. Izzo, Pops, he never left my side. Matt, man, Matt came to get me. I wouldn't even return the cars. I was just in my in my my little mode, my little whatever I was going through. I was in uh, down, just terrible. And Matt called me, called me, called me, made me come up and have lunch with him. Like, man, I'm talking about, man, put his arms around me, man, had my back. Cause it's crazy when I looked around, all that I did for other people, and I do it again. Cause that's just how I'm wired. My mama raised me that way. I looked around, man, wasn't nobody there. A lot of people. And you ain't say your name. You was there. Shit. You, you, you was there. You know what I'm saying? I talked to you, talking to you, man. Just like when I was going through what I went through, just talking to you, man. Like that shit lifted my spirits, man. Like little stuff like you was there. You know what I mean? But a lot of people, man, when I looked around, man, they left. They left me for dead. But what they ain't know, man, I kept breathing. I wasn't going to die. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to die. You know what I mean? The world left me for dead, man but I wouldn't fucking die because I'm wired different. You know what I mean? But Matt, what he did for me, man, standing in my corner to this day, bringing me into an organization when I was going through what I went through, when people was running away from that shit, then nobody wanted to touch me. He brought me in. He told me, man, you my guy. You my big brother. I love you. I got your back no matter what. He brought me in through the thick of it. When he his company was booming, where it only could have hurt him, he didn't care about none of that. He cared about me, man. Having my back. You know what I'm saying? So it's stuff like that. Coach Izzo, man, when I was going through, man, came to court. He got ridiculed. A lot of people, why would he go? Isn't that? Because it's family. He, first of all, they know I ain't do the shit that they were saying I did. But it's family. And that's what you do. You, you ride with family. You stick up for family. And, and that's, that's the shit that separates us from a lot of these different schools, man. That part is, is being in my corner. Matt being in my corner. You being in my corner. Steve, big bro. He was there, man. Talked to me. Called me, man. I was fucked up. He sent me some bread and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like that stuff, man. That's the stuff that separates you. And I gotta, I gotta get where, even though see where I went to the other school, that's my baby too. He was on me. He was calling me, checking on me, tapping in when he sent me some bread too. I ain't even ask, I ain't even asked for it. Here, man. It, here you go. So you comfortable, man. Make sure y'all your family straight, man. It's that stuff, man. That 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 got me through it, man. But Coach Izzo, man, man, you, Webb, um, Smitty, big bro, man. Like, y'all love y'all to death, man. I I'm, mean, I'm I give y'all my heart, man, anything I could do. Because when I was fucked up in that bad space, when y'all put y'all arm around me, man, that shit priceless. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that, man. That, 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 that saved my life, man. That kept me going. Because all this, it wasn't that, going through that shit. You know what I mean? But y'all got me back. Now I'm back. Now they asking trouble. Here I come. <laughs> Let's it's get on. it. Absolutely. <laughs> I, and then there's there's also one person who I think stuck by your side like nobody else that I want to speak on, my big sis, Shanda. Oh, man. Your wife. Yeah, man. Like, I think as, like, we grow up and, like, you, you chase, like, we, we chase the prettiest girl and, you know, we think we big shit and, like, I can get whoever I want. <laughs> and then you go through some shit and motherfuckers flee. <laughs> and she held you down. Ooh. She's still holding you down. Speak on, sp oh, I, I need you to speak that, on her. Man, she's so cold and real and stronger than I can ever be. To have to go through that shit she went through, man, and still stay in my corner, go to court with me, stand on my side. And hear all the shit people saying, and man, that one right there, she better than me. I told, I told her you much stronger than I ever thought I could be. You a real one, and now I know why I married you. It's that, you know what I mean? You held me down in my weakest moment, and when I screwed up a little bit, so she, when she told me she was okay, that say that that took a weight off, that a burden off me, cause I could eat whatever come with whatever, bring it. I, I deal with whatever come to me. I eat that. 
But when she told me, when I when I hurt other people, that 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 screws with me. If I hurt, let you down or Coach Izzo or something, that hurts me because I hurt you. But I could eat whatever comes with well, I deal with it. I'm just, I, I deal with it. I eat it. But when she told me she was all right, man, that saved me, man. That saved me. That took a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of hurt and, and pressure off me. But she, she, man, she priceless because a lot of people would have just ran. She stood 10 toes down with me. That's my dog to this day. She, Man, she she she's special, and I I'm, I show sure appreciate having a wife like that, cause she held me down, man. Like when just coming out of that court sometimes, man, and just hugging me when she should have been mad, you know about a lot of stuff, hugging me, just being there for me. That that's that's priceless. That's priceless. So I'm glad you brought that up because she definitely need her roses, and I'm doing I'm I'm a work in progress, <laughs> but I'm trying to be a better husband every day because. She showed me what what's real, what's loyalty, what the, she she did. You know what I mean. So I learned a lot from her going through that situation. She's stronger than I ever could be. You know, and, and and all the stuff that went down. But she a real one, man. I got a real one with me. No doubt. Yes, sir. No doubt. And <clears throat> before we get out of here, when I think back to that time, because you beat it once, and that wasn't good enough, I'm gonna beat this shit again. I remember when they first pulled it back. I hit you. Said what? Said we good, little bro. I'ma beat this shit again. Cause I ain't do that shit. <laughs> right. I'ma beat it again. And when you said that to me, that's all I needed to hear. But it's one thing that you said to me that stuck with me and that I'll never forget. And you said, the only thing that's really fucking me up is these motherfuckers trying to take me from my son. Yeah, man. They trying to take me from my son. They not, they trying not to let me raise my son. That's the only thing that's really fucking me up. Right. To get through that, to continue raising my nephew, Lil Mo, who, by the way, going to be a motherfucking star <laughs> for y'all that don't know. <laughs> don't like, say that. No. We, we keep grinding. Like, <laughs> like, a star for y'all that don't know. <laughs> How did that strengthen your bond with, with your son? Because, you know, we all, we all, you know, you have a son and, and the reality is, is you think like, yo, that's going to be my right hand man. Like, and then sometimes it don't go that way. You know, like life takes on its own path. Sometimes it don't go that way. But how did that strengthen two sons? But one was already in college, yeah. already out the house. The raising of him had already been done. Yeah. But at the time, I think little, little most seven. Eight, yeah. You know what I'm saying? How did that strengthen you, and what perspective did that give you about being a father going through that? Man, that like that's the shit that worried me every day. I would go in there, man. He would be asleep. I'd just go stare at him, standing in his door. I'm looking at 15 years in prison, man, and that's all I was thinking about. My manager was like, man, are you scared to go to prison? Man, hell no. I, that's nothing. When you're in the jungle, you become an animal. I, I'll be cool. I adapted that shit. Wasn't worried about that. I was worried about being away from him. It's my baby. I ain't finna leave him out here with these wolves. Shit, in, in, in this world, man, and with no guidance, that's what was killing me. That part, man, I wasn't worried about that shit. Prison, man, I, I eat that. That's nothing. But I don't want to be away from him. So that's that's what was eating me up. But what, what that situation did gave me more time with him. I kept him on my hip. And you know, it's one motherfucker, excuse my language, I knew that loved me, him. When I come through the door, man, looking in his eyes, daddy running up to me, jumping in my arm. He was a little a little, a little boy back there, just laying on, sitting on my lap, watching the games, watching you. Like, that stuff right there, that's what it was about. I knew somebody loved me. No matter what, my mama had passed away, my daddy. So I knew it was one person that loved me. I knew I was loved, you know, yo, you, Izzy, big bro, Steve, whatever, all that. I knew that. I, that little one right there loved me no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I had to stay strong and get through that, man. But I would come in and look at him some days. And I was so worried to be away from him, man, because I didn't want to be a statistic, man. I read about that stuff coming from the ghetto, man. You see that, man? Dads that ain't even in their kids' life. And by the way, I don't have zero respect for you if you don't take care of your kids. Zero. You can't even hang with me. So, because that's a blessing, man. You got to tap into and pour into him. I pour in my hell. I pour into other kids. You know what I'm saying? That's just what we're supposed to do. So that's what I was more worried about, being away from him, man. But I, I had so much time. Coach Izzo was saying, because I we always try to, like, damn, what's good from this? Like, because <laughs> that was rough. I'm like, Coach, I don't know if I can find no good from that shit. <laughs> but it was the time with him. 
and I'm molding him and molding him and molding him, man. And you just doing some love. Hopefully he can become a better, good basketball player at some point. But he's going to be good in life, man, because I'm, I'm tapping into him. I told you, you're going to be great no matter what. I don't got to tell you to be great. Look in the mirror and tell yourself you're going to be great. Period. So I'm tapping into him every day. So the fact that I'm out here being able to do that, man, I, I'm so blessed and love that. I take pride in that shit. I'm a happy. I love being a daddy. Love it. I keep him on my hip. I, I stay on him. I, I kiss on him, love him, hold him, but hold him highly accountable. You know what I mean? But that part, being a father, man, that that's the real to me. You know what I'm saying? So that's something that I take pride in. I'm going to do a, do a hell of a job with it. I'm going to challenge the hell out of him, hold him highly accountable. He'll be successful in whatever he is, what he's going to try. Because we, we don't settle for less. Shit, that's just how we wired. And let me transition to this before we get out of here because I got to tell you, like, how proud I am of you. Like, I can sit there with him and talk about, look, uh, and the shit that you're doing and all this great stuff, the basketball stuff and the podcast and, and the, the fucking everything you did for Saginaw and shit you're doing for Michigan State University and all that that you do, man. Like, that shit makes me feel good. Like a big brother, like a happy big brother. I'm looking at my little brother shine. Like, that shit big time for me. I walked out that courtroom. As soon as I was able to get to my phone and turn it on, who on are you? FaceTime. Yeah. yeah Hollering and screaming at me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They took my passport. I have, you like we go to Cabo. I said, shit, give me a day. <laughs> give me one more day. I'm getting my I'm getting my passport. But you took me and my wife to Cabo, man, like that. Stuff like that, man, is priceless. You know what I'm saying? So the shit that you've done and been in my corner and rolled for me, man, it's crazy because it's cats I grew up with, man, that ain't staying stand, stand with me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What you did and what you doing, I'm so proud of you. You know what I mean? I remember I posted something right after y'all won a championship. I said, winning and shut all that hate up. Absolutely. Everybody want to say shit. They don't like winners, man. That's what it is. They don't like you because you believe in you. You wired different. And people that's not wired that way, that affects them. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But keep being who you are. You different, man. And the people that the real ones love it and respect it and going to ride with you. So fuck what anybody ever say. You keep being that. That's what I. That's what I raised. That. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And I appreciate it. And uh, as the legend you are, goat. We never leaving on no somber note. We talked about the bullshit. Yeah. It is what it is. But <clears throat> now let's talk about the good shit. <laughs> Motivation with my team. Where we taking that? Oh man, we every day, little bro, and and it's like I don't know what I'm doing with it. I ain't got no team or marketing strategies or nothing. When I pick my phone up and I be in the car, I feel like saying something. I'm gonna say it because it's somebody out there that need to hear some of the stuff I'm saying. If it's one person, I don't care. Somebody, I said, somebody chiming in like, "Shut up!" I said, "Oh, I'm, I'm getting to them." Absolutely. Yeah, they listening. Absolutely. And that person who said that probably negative, life all screwed up, don't want to be great. You know what I mean? But. That's what I'm going to do. I think that's, that is my gift. I think that's what I'm here to do is I did it in basketball. I'm doing it in business now in corporate America. UWM, I got to shot them out. Absolutely. One of the most successful companies in America. We killing it. Matt's got something special there. He, hell of a leader. Setting the tone. We doing great stuff at UWM, baby. We the best at what we do. But it's helping me, man. I'm going to help a lot of people, man. That's what I'm here to do. I got to do it. And I don't want to motivational speak to make money. It probably will come, but I love helping people, man. I love seeing people grow. I love empowering others. It's a lot of people that need to hear, like, the shit that we put in you. Tell you it's going to be okay. Get people to go to the next level. It's, I, I see greatness in a lot of people that they don't even see in themselves, just like you do. You, you one of them people that get the best out of others. Man, that's special. It's a lot of great players, great people, but can you make somebody else great? That's when you're different. So what I want to do is use that as a platform, and we'll talk off camera, because I'm going to definitely use you for that <laughs> and use your platform and see how I can grow this thing. But that's what I want to do, man. I want to help other people. I want to motivate people. man. I want to see people be successful. That's it. That's where I want to take that, man. So I'm going to continue to post stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to... Uh, get educated more with the social media stuff because I'm trying to get hip to that and get more content out to people. But we feel I'm going to step it up. I'm going to step it up, man, because I am in the business of helping people. I'm in the business of making people better. All right? So that's where we're going to take this thing. We're going to make a lot of people better. Let's get it. Let's do it. Big bro, like I said, man, for everything that you've done in my life, the, the path that you created here um, for, for myself, not only myself, but for all of us, 
to walk through that path and, and pave the way like you did so we can come to a program that's one of the top programs in the country. I'm from Saginaw, as you know. You're from Flint. <laughs> Sag, we don't, Sag nasty. Like, we don't get opportunities like that every day. Right. And for what you created, you know, <clears throat> I've been fortunate enough to be successful in the NBA. It's cool. Like, that's very crazy. successful. <laughs> but the reality is, like, what you accomplished and, and what, you, what you did, damn the NBA. So people try to make you feel like, oh, man, you didn't have this career in the NBA. You're not great. You're a failure. You made it out of Flint, Michigan. 100%. And you paved the way for a kid from Saginaw, Michigan. And for that, I'm forever indebted to you. I thank you. I love you. I appreciate you coming on the show. And we're going to turn up again tonight. That's love right, you, bro. baby. Turn up, boy. I appreciate you. Yes, sir, man. <laughs> love you too, baby. Yes, sir. Uh, to the casket drop. Sir, Yes, sir. The Draymond Green Show. <laughs>